Hi there, welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to go over two of the really popular ultralight flashlights around. It's the Nightcore NU25 and the Petzl Bindi. They're both under two ounces. In fact, with the strap, original strap, it was 1.8 ounces. But if you get rid of it and you make yourself a shock cord amount, it's 1.3 and 1.2. So very comparable. Both have non-replaceable batteries. They're built in and they take micro USB charging. This one is plugged up and this one is open. And they're really similar, but very different. I use this for maybe the last 600 miles of the PCT, 700 miles of the PCT through hike. And I use this a lot during my car camping throughout the year this year. And I actually use this a lot more than anything else because I like the low power and it has a red light. Big thing is a red light. So if you're outside your car and you don't want everyone being able to see you, the red light really helps. I did not use this because, well, I just didn't like the button. So I'll get into that later. The other similar things with these is because I have a built-in battery, there could be a little hesitation to using it for long night hikes, but they both function with a USB battery bank plugged into it. So if you plug this into a micro USB battery power of some kind, like a wall charger or a battery bank, they both work. This one actually works with almost low, no limitations, but this one, the high doesn't work. So from what I've hiked with this, the medium is a little too dark. You can hike in it but it's just a little too dark. I preferred it on high, but I'll show you how long that's gonna last on high though, and that's just not gonna last through an entire night. This is similar if you put it on high, not turbo, turbo is way brighter. It'll last a similar amount of time, but again, it's not gonna last all night, but it's nice that you can plug in a battery bank and it will last all night then. Or if you have to start hiking at three in the morning, it could last until six o'clock, no problem. So. It's pretty nice, and I found in the Sierra Nevada, especially if you're hiking at night and you're trying to navigate, having a really bright power source is nice. So you could see people in front of you as well as make out the contours of the terrain to see which way you're supposed to be going. If it's not as bright, you're just kind of just mulling through and you're staring at your phone, looking at gut hooks the whole time. So the higher power really is useful. The other big difference with these two is there are two buttons here whereas this only has one button for everything. It's kind of takes a while to get used to. It doesn't remember what you last used. So when you hit it once, it goes to low right away. And then if you hit it again, also, sorry, there's a flickering going on. I don't know why it's with this flashlight. Once slow, if you click it again within a certain amount of period, it'll go to the next level. But if you click it after that period ends, it just turns off. So once slow, Two's medium, there's high, and on high the flicker disappears. Kind of odd, and then off. To get the red light, you hold it from an off position. And you can just barely make it out because it's super low. It's basically for reading or something. It's not, if you're gonna try to use this flashlight to not step on people in the shelter, it's not gonna work. I would not recommend it for that purpose. It's it's only setting it has two and it's tiny. And then once again is off. If you hold it and then you hit it again, it goes to this flicker mode. But again, it's super faint, super faint. You can barely even see it on the camera. <laughs> and that's almost it. Other than that, it comes with this shock cord system. To lock the flashlight, you hit it and you wait and eventually light turns off, red light blinks, that means it's locked. The other way to lock it too is you can just flip it all the way and this plastic portion blocks the button. So works pretty well for, I, I actually prefer locking it this way because you don't have to fiddle with it. The button itself, it's tiny. There's my finger. It's just a little middle part in the middle and it's kind of a pain to hit. I disliked it actually. 
during the through hike I preferred using my Olight light more and this one just because I just did not like hitting the button but oh well and the other advantage it has is it folds up and down so you they advertise sorry for the audio here that you could wear it down here and then tilt it to whichever direction lights up the trail which is pretty good I actually did use it that way so works out pretty well the only thing I found is if you plug in a battery bank this doesn't have too much friction so it'll start rolling down from the cable so now the Nightcore NU25 it is for a little while now it's very popular and you can make your own little shock cord connector here the top part loops these holes the bottom part just kind of goes through here you can actually pop it off this way but I found if you loop it through the holes it interferes with the tilt mechanism on here so with the shock cord you can just make these loops it's nice having the two because if you just have the top one it keeps floating up on you but with this it holds it in place you have a little slider you always need an adjuster not that your head will increase in size but you could be wearing hats big thing now to operate this there are two buttons on top if you hit the light once it's just low and it always goes to low so medium high and then off now if you leave it off and you hold the power button you turn on this light which is a more natural light so colors will reflect more evenly whereas this light's more of a cold light and once off red light is just hit it once go low oh, I pass this period so hit it once for low and then hit it again for high and it's actually a pretty bright red light and then a the third time will make it blink by it past the threshold and there's blinking it always starts at low now once you turn a low on for the normal light if you hold it you get turbo and that is very bright and that's that and to see what the battery charges you hit the red light button and hold it for a few seconds and you can see three blinks means it's mostly fully charged now after using this pretty extensively and using this pretty extensively what I found is I just do not like this button it's just one tiny button and it it's not I don't know it just hurts my fingers and you gotta hold it and actually I brought it with me all last year but it sat in a box the whole time and I did not use it at all this light though I really like that you can just turn on the red light by itself there's no chance of accidentally turning on the red light that one will remember if you use white or red but when you wake up can you remember if it was white or red the last time you used it with this it's just white or red no problem and the red is significantly brighter so you can actually walk around in the dark with this no problem now I'm not even going to compare these two to the Olight that I have that uh, I mentioned this in my three luxury items I put it on here because this is uh, for a headlamp and I actually use this more than this just because the battery in here is replaceable and low is very low just no red if I needed red I pulled this guy out and this guy is still significant significantly brighter at any backpacking trip I did last year I still took this one because I really like it I could just keep it next to me and it's my super what's that noise because you just hit it twice and you get the turbo which is much brighter than the turbo on this so super nice flashlight still really like it weighs a little bit but it's nice also having a backup flashlight in case one of these batteries does die so the other advantage I found with this kind of flashlight that uses a CR123 battery is you can get a lithium battery not a rechargeable one but a regular lithium one and they will work in much much colder conditions than the rechargeables the rechargeables they lose they don't lose power but they hardly generate any power when it's cold but the regular lithium batteries will operate much longer so you get longer duration out of it so keep that in mind next time you go on a super super cold hike now both headlights are okay so this is my preferred headlight 
But if you like this, it's good too. I think this is a little cheaper. I'll look up the current price and list it below. And this one may be a little bit more expensive. I will tell you, after the PCT, I had a problem where I couldn't use this one at all. So I wrote Petzl support and then they just asked me to send it in. So I sent it in and they gave me a brand new one. So, and they shipped it out pretty quickly. So good on you Petzl for customer support. But this one, I haven't had any problems yet. Now on other flashlight reviews and channels, I know they go out to trails and shine it down a trail, but uh, it's cold out there. I thought I'd do it just in a room against the white wall. That way you can also see how wide the beams are and I'll compare the two. Now, I'm doing something I have never seen a flashlight review do. I set the camera on all manual, so the ISO was set to static. I believe I used 4000. I set the aperture to the same and the shutter speed the same. So everything's the same. So if you turn on a light, there's not going to be this adjustment where all the levels look exactly the same. I hate that when you see someone review a flashlight and it's all the lights look the same because the camera keeps adjusting. So everything's at manual. So what you see is what you get. So I will show you everything here. When I turn on the headlamp, it automatically starts at low, but I'll cut over and, and you could see on the other camera that my display is fluctuating like that. Now that's called pulse width modulation. And actually some electronics use this to dim the light by periodically turning it off and on like that. So it's actually send, sending the same current and voltage to the light, just turning it on and off, which I can't see it with my eyes. If I look really closely, maybe I'm seeing a shutter, but I know if some people are really sensitive to fluorescent lights, they may really hate this flashlight on low, especially if you think you're gonna read on low. Now here's medium. That pulsing is still going, but it's slower now, I guess. And if you could see it with this camera, low, medium, high. On high, nothing, because that is the full light with no pulse width modulation at all. So it's interesting. This flashlight tries to use a different method to offer lower settings. Quite interesting. Could be annoying, but interesting. Now to enter the red light for the Petzl, you click and hold. And the red light is on. And that, you can just see it. Just see it. It's very low amount of lumens. It's a really low red light. And there's only one setting. And I think it's way too weak to be able to walk around a shelter and avoiding stepping on people. Maybe if you woke up in the middle of the night and your eyes were just super used to the dark, you could do it. But it's it's not that strong. Um, it could work, but I, I don't know. It's, and it's only the one setting. And if you click it again, it will turn off. Of course, when you click it and it turns on and you click it again within the three seconds, it does the beacon. It's so weak. Right, on to the Nightcore. Now the Nightcore has a lot of different settings. We'll start with the yellow light or the more natural light from the off settings. What you do is you hold the power button for several seconds. And that is the secondary light. It's like a yellowish beam. Here, auto white balance of course throws it out, but it is more yellowish looking and it is really, really wide. So. It's good for just looking around. Pretty good. Although I never really use it, but pretty good. And any button will just turn it off. And we'll start with the regular white light. Click the power button just once. That's low. Pretty forward, but usable. All right, so let's go low, medium. Pretty bright. So this flashlight's beam seems to be focused more and uh, that gives it a further distance throw. You can't see the sides as well, but it is wide enough that you should be able to see both sides of the trail within eight feet, 10 feet easily. So it shouldn't be a problem. And there's also a weaker light that goes at quite a bit to the sides. So it's not, it's not like you're gonna have absolute tunnel vision. So pretty good. 
Now let's go into the high. Low, medium, high. Now the high on this flashlight at 190 lumens is very bright. Uh, it, they say it can last five hours, and if it can, this is a very usable light for hiking up to five hours. You could see pretty far. Should be able to see rattlesnakes, no problem, and traverse different terrain like in the mountains in the Sierra without too much problem. It's pretty bright, and if you need to, once it's on, if you hold the light, it goes to turbo. Now, that's 360 lumens, much brighter, and this supposedly only lasts about 30 seconds before it overheats and then dims down. But in a, if you all of a sudden have to look further, it's good to just have that turbo so you can kick it up, see what you need, and then you'll have to turn it off and then back on. But uh, that gives you a nice little bit of insurance where you can have a pretty strong light for a short period of time. Now the red light, here's low. This is much dimmer than the Petzl's red light. I would say it's not much, but a little dimmer. This is unusable to walk around. I mean, it's mostly dark in this room and I could see the floor. So if I had to, maybe I wouldn't step on people in the shelter, but pretty weak. Now, this flashlight, however, has a high red beam. Look at that. You could see everything really well. This is, you can easily walk around and not step on people. The only problem is this red light is pretty bright, so maybe people take offense if you shine it in their eyes. But it's very usable. You can use this to walk around in, in the night outside your tent to if you had to go to the bathroom or something and not have everybody seeing you because the white light just draws so much attention. Now the Bindi is IPX4, whereas the Nightcore is IP66. And I've always heard IPX something, number like 678, but I wasn't sure what 66 meant. So I looked it up, did some research, and it turns out the first number is the dust resistance. The higher is better, and X generally means it wasn't tested. And of course, for the second number, it's water resistance, and again, higher is better. So this is four, which is rated for resistance to splashing, whereas the six is resistant to high pressure water jets. And it is pretty apparent though, because the Nikkor has rubber cover for the micro USB port, whereas the Bindi does not. You think they could provide a little bit more for that, but that's just the way it is. Another con against the Petzl is the micro USB port. I'll show you some close up pictures, but the port is a rectangle. Usually micro USB ports have one right angle and then a corner, which I'll show you as well. Because of that, I found that when you're trying to plug in a micro USB port, you can flip it upside down and accidentally force it. And there's a little plastic strip in there and you can totally damage that. Having the angles makes it so you can't plug it in the wrong way and push against that flat port part. So I'm not sure why they did that. That's the only time I've ever seen any electronics that uses micro USB not have the angles in there. It doesn't make sense. You're just gonna wind up breaking it. So that's a counting and set. Maybe newer models have better ports there, but I have no idea why they did that. Now overall, I guess they're both great lights and they're very similar. This of course has much longer runtime at similar lumens as this. The throw and the width are similar. Weights are similar. However, this has several features that are much better than this. Mostly the water resistance, having a brighter red light, brighter main light. This does not have any pulsing during lower settings, whereas this does. And the lockout feature is just much easier. You just push the two buttons real quickly, whereas this one, you gotta hold it for three seconds and the shape of the button is tiny, so it actually hurts your fingers. Although to lock it out, you can flip it, and that's what I did most of the time. Of course, the B 
big thing between these two is this is currently $60 in Amazon and this is 35 so you can almost buy two of these so if you buy one and the battery slowly dies you can just buy another one whereas this costs $60 so it's I mean it's pretty obvious that that's the way to go now the only thing I can see that is a pro for the bindi is if you like really pretty things it is definitely better looking instead of just a black rectangle it's got some curves shiny colors and of course it doesn't look as ghetto as that but you know function over form for me but if you like form over function and you want to pay a little bit more i guess that could be the winner so i hope you enjoyed this comparison i made of these two flashlights they're really similar so i thought i'd since I owned them, I would compare them and let you see for yourself. And I'd tell you why I prefer this one and see if you agree. But they're both good flashlights. Um, if you'd like to get this one, you could. I would recommend this one though, for sure. All right, and I have links for both of these products down below. They're Amazon affiliate links. You probably heard the same thing. If you click on it, um, if you shop through the link, it really helps this channel out but you don't necessarily have to buy it. You could cl click on it and just buy whatever else you want. And then I get a small cut, but that would be great if you do that. And like, and subscribe for more things. I don't often do too many gear reviews cause I don't have too many things and I really like to thoroughly test everything before I make videos. I, I don't like it when people get it and just like in 30 minutes they make a video, but I'll make some reviews of other products as well. So until then, you have a nice night, and I'll talk to you later.